Let's round up all different kinds of English vocabulary words from daily life and focus on the pronunciation so you're comfortable using this vocabulary in your own spoken English. We'll go over foods, clothes and laundry, the car. Let's start with vegetables. Garlic looks good. Tomatoes on the vine. Those look nice. These might be heirloom tomatoes. They are. Mm, those look so nice. Slice that on a sandwich. There you heard the terms garlic and tomatoes. Words with stress on the first syllable. For garlic, we have an R followed by L. Depending on your native language, that can be tricky. Try practicing it holding out your R. Gar. The tip is pulled slightly back and up and it's not touching anything. Gar garlic. Then bring your tongue tip up and forward for the light L. Garlic. Say that with me. Garlic. Garlic looks good. Tomato or tomatoes. Notice that the first T is a true T, unlike tomorrow or today, which also start with an unstressed syllable T schwa. This really has to be a true T. It sounds weird with a flap T. The second T, however, is a flap T because it comes between two vowels and doesn't start a stressed syllable. Tomato. 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 Make that by just flapping your tongue once on the roof of the mouth. Tomato. Tomatoes. Say those with me. Tomato. Tomatoes. You also heard the phrase tomatoes on the vine, which is just what it sounds like, a set of tomatoes still attached to the vine. Tomatoes on the vine. Those look nice. Also, I said heirloom tomatoes. Those are tomatoes grown from heirloom seeds. Notice that the H is silent in that word. Heirloom. Say that with me. Heirloom. These might be heirloom tomatoes. They are. Mm, those look so nice. Slice that on a sandwich. You also heard a funny pronunciation of the word sandwich. We often don't say the D sound in this word, so it sounds like sandwich, sandwich, with just an N sound. And you'll even hear it with an M instead of an N. That's what I did. Sam, sandwich, sandwich, sandwich. A very common pronunciation of that word. Sandwich. Say that with me. Sandwich. Slice that on a sandwich. Let's look at a close-up of garlic. This is called a head of garlic, and one piece pulled off is called a clove. Head. Clove. Say those with me. Head. Clove. Sweet potato. Red onion. Yellow onion. White onion. Red potato. Regular potato. Russet. There you saw several varieties of potatoes and onions. Potato rhymes with tomato. The first T is a true T because it begins a stressed syllable, even though it does come between two vowels. The second T is a flap T because it comes between two vowels and doesn't start a stressed syllable. Potato. Potato. The first O is a schwa. P. The second O is the O diphthong. O. O. Potato. Say that with me. Potato. Red potato. Regular potato, russet. Onion. The first letter, O, is the uh as in butter sound. Uh. Onion. Onion. Say that with me. Onion. Red onion. Yellow onion. White onion. All sorts of mushrooms. Look how big these portobellas are. Oh my gosh. They're huge. Mushrooms. One of my favorite vegetables. So many varieties and also one of Stoney's favorite vegetables. Two-syllable word stress on the first syllable, mush room. Room, room, room. Room is unstressed, lower in pitch, has less energy in the voice. Room, mushroom, mushroom. Say that with me, mushroom. All sorts of mushrooms. Look how big these portobellas are. Oh my gosh, cauliflower, oh that looks good. Cauliflower. The first syllable can have the aw vowel, caw, 
or the ah vowel, ka, kale, kale, cauliflower. The first syllable is the most stressed. Cauliflower. Say that with me. Cauliflower. Cauliflower. Oh, that looks good. Like garlic, a unit of one cauliflower is called a head. When you cut it up into smaller pieces, those pieces are called florets. Florets. Say that with me. Florets. Nice and fresh. Asparagus. Asparagus. A four syllable word with stress on the second syllable. So the first syllable should lead up to it and the last two syllables fall away. Asparagus. Asparagus. Say that with me. Asparagus. Asparagus. Oh wow, look at this artichoke. I've never made an artichoke. I've only ever bought them canned. Artichoke. Here we have a flap T. Why? It doesn't come between two vowels. That's the rule for flap T. But there is a second rule. A T is also a flap T when it comes after an R before a vowel or diphthong, like here. So you'll flap your tongue once on the roof of the mouth. Artichoke. First syllable stress. Artichoke. Say that with me. Artichoke. Oh wow, look at this artichoke. The eggplants look good. Is that on the list? Yep. And the cabbages. Eggplant. Eggplant has nothing to do with a chicken, but one variety was originally called this because it looked like a goose egg. Make the G with the back of the tongue, g, 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 then close your lips for the P. Egg. Don't try to pull your tongue away to fully pronounce the G. Eggplant. Eggplant, eggplant. That G is too heavy. Instead, just lift the tongue, egg, close the lips for the P and release. Eggplant, eggplant. Say that with me. Eggplant. The eggplants look good. Parsnips. Don't think that's on our list. Parsnip. I love these put into a fruit and vegetable smoothie. Make sure you drop your jaw for the ah vowel before the r. Par, par, parsnip. Say that with me. Parsnip. Parsnips. I also bought a bunch of vegetables and brought them home. Let's take a look. Avocado, let's cut it open. An avocado, let's see. What's on the inside? It's not a seed. Is it a pit? Does that sound right to you? It's a pit. There it is. Avocado. Avocado. We have two syllables here with the ah as in father vowel. Don't let that first letter O fool you. It's a schwa. Uh, said very quickly. Ava. Ava. Uh, uh. Ava. Avocado. Third syllable is the most stressed, but the first syllable has some stress too. Avocado. 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 Say that with me. Avocado. Avocado. I mentioned seed and pit. I went over the pronunciation of these two words in the fruit vocabulary video that I did. Did you miss that? It's a great one. An avocado, let's see. What's on the inside? It's not a seed. Is it a pit? Does that sound right to you? It's a pit. There it is. Broccoli. Broccoli. Just like cauliflower, this is a head. And when it's cut into smaller pieces, those are called florets. This is one of those words that can be three syllables or two, like camera, camera, and family, family. I recommend you go with the two syllable pronunciation. I think it's more common and it's simpler. Broccoli instead of broccoli. Broccoli. First syllable stress. Broccoli. Say that with me. Broccoli. Broccoli. Cabbage. Let's cut it open. I have to be really careful because this knife is extremely sharp. 
I actually gave it to David for Father's Day, and the same day we had to go to the ER because he cut his finger. <laughs> I better be really careful. This is a tough cabbage. There we go. Cabbage. Cabbage, which can be extremely hard to cut. Cabbage, this is also called a head, a head of cabbage, but it doesn't cut down into florets the way that broccoli and cauliflower does. Good thing I was so careful with that knife, right? The first syllable is stressed, so keep the second syllable really short. Itch, itch, itch. Cabbage, cabbage. Say that with me. Cabbage. Cabbage, which can be extremely hard to cut. Carrot. Carrots. I can't hear this word without thinking of Anne of Green Gables, where a boy teases her for having red hair by calling her carrots. The castle of Carrots. Carrots. You mean hateful boy? Oh. How dare you? This word is written phonetically with the a ah as in bat vowel, but that's not how it's pronounced. R changes this vowel. It's more like the e eh as in bed vowel, but not quite that either. Care, care, care. Just like C-A-R-E, care. Carrot, carrot, carrots. Say those with me. Carrot, carrots. Carrot. I have two peppers, a red pepper and an orange pepper. Peppers. There are so many kinds of peppers. Bell peppers, like you saw in the video, and then all kinds of hot, spicy peppers. And then, of course, there's the spice, pepper, which, with salt, is very typical on the American dinner table. Pepper. Unstressed schwa R ending said quickly, low in pitch, er, er. Pepper. Pepper. Say that with me. Pepper. I have two peppers, a red pepper and an orange pepper. Here's a bunch of kale. Kale is a really thick, hearty leaf. Kale, K consonant, A diphthong, and the dark L. Kale, kale. This is a bunch of kale, not a head, like we have with lettuce or cabbage. All of the leaves were already cut off and not attached to a main stem. So it's a bunch. Kale. Say that with me. Kale. Kale. Kale is a really thick, hearty leaf. Lettuce. A two-syllable word with first-syllable stress. What do you notice about the double T? Lettuce. It's a flap T, a single sound. The second syllable is said very quickly. Lettuce. Is, is, is. Lettuce. Say that with me. Lettuce. This is a bunch of scallions, also known as green onions. Scallions or green onions. Green onion or scallion. You already know onion. Green can be a little tricky because of the GR consonant cluster. With clusters with R, I always recommend holding out the R as you practice to give you some time to focus in on the right sound and position. Green, green. Green. Green onion. Say that with me. Green onion. Green onions. Scallion. Another word for the exact same thing. A dark L. Scal. Scal. Scallion. Scallion. Say that with me. Scallion. Scallions. Corn. This is an ear of corn, and when you take off the outer leaves to reveal the kernels of the corn, this act, this verb, <laughs> which is harder than it looks, is called shucking. I'm shucking the corn. Corn. Corn on the cob. Corn. This word has the aw as in law vowel, but when it's followed by r, just like it is here, it changes. Now the lips round more and the tongue pulls back more. So it's not aw, law, but it's o, co, corn, 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 corn. Say that with me, corn. 
corn. Shucking corn is a lot of work, isn't it? I called the green things that I was pulling down leaves, but really that's the husk. And inside the husk, those strands that look like hair, that's called corn silk. You'll see some more corn silk coming up in a minute. This is an ear of corn, and when you take off the outer leaves to reveal the kernels of the corn, this act, this verb, <laughs> which is harder than it looks, is called shucking. I'm shucking the corn. I didn't get video of celery, cucumber, or radishes, three other common vegetables. Celery is another word that can be three syllables, cel er e, celery. But I recommend pronouncing it with two, celery, celery, celery. Say that with me, celery. Cucumber, three syllable word stress on the first syllable, which has the u diphthong, q, q, cucumber. Say that with me, cucumber. Radish or radishes. The plural here, es, adds an extra syllable because the last sound of the noun was an sh. Radishes. Radishes. It's like the word is, said very quickly as a third syllable. Radish. Radishes. Say those with me. Radish. Radishes. That's it for the vegetable vocabs. Here's some corn silk. Woo! Celebrate! You know, we could continue on with food, but I'm kind of feeling cars. Let's get started. The steering wheel. Steering wheel. Steering is two syllables. The ing ending is always unstressed. It has an r in it, which can be a tricky sound. Make sure you hold it out. Steering. If you can't, steering. Da, 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 da. Then you're making it with the wrong part of the tongue. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. The tongue tip should be pulled back and up a little bit so it's not touching anything. Wheel. WH words like wheel can be pronounced w or w without the before. I think it's easier just to use the W sound. Wheel. Wheel. Steering wheel. Say that with me. Steering wheel. Steering wheel. The steering wheel. This is the gear shift. We have a P for park, R for reverse, N for neutral, and D for drive. Gear shift. Gear shift. Gear. Ear. That's the same combination as steer. Ear. Gear shift. Say that with me. Gear shift. Gear shift. This is the gear shift. We have a P for park. 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 All vowel plus R. Lots of my students say something like park without dropping the jaw. Do drop your jaw. Get a clear AW vowel before the R. Par, park. Say that with me. Park, park. We have a P for park, R for reverse. Reverse. Two syllables and the first syllable is really short. R, r, r. Reverse. Say that with me. Reverse, reverse. R for reverse, N for neutral. Neutral. Many Americans make the TR cluster sound like CHR. Neutral. Ch -ch. Try that with me. Neutral. Neutral. N for neutral and D for drive. Drive. Some people, especially Japanese speakers, have a problem with R and L. Remember, it's not live with the tongue tip forward, but drive. Drrrr, with the tongue tip pulled back and up a little bit. Drrrr, so it's not touching anything. Try that with me. Drive. Drive. And D for drive. 
We have the emergency brake or parking brake. Emergency brake or parking brake. Emergency. Stress is on that second syllable. Emergency. Emergency. Try that with me. Emergency. Emergency brake. Parking brake. Remember the ing ending is unstressed. Parking brake. Say that with me. Parking. Parking brake. We have the emergency brake or parking brake. This is the dashboard. Dashboard. Stress on the first syllable. Dash. Board. Try that with me. Dash. Board. Dashboard. Dashboard. This is the dashboard. Here's the rear view mirror. Rear view mirror. Two words with two R sounds. This is so hard. Rear and mirror have the same sound combination except for the first consonant, ear, ear. This is just like steer in steering wheel. The tongue tip is forward, touching the back, the bottom front teeth, and then just lifts and pulls back a little bit, ear, so it's not touching anything. Rear, mirror, rear view mirror. Re-emphasize the R for the second syllable of mirror. Mirror, mirror. Let's try the whole thing together slowed down. Say it out loud with me. Rear view mirror. Rear view mirror. And now at regular pace. Rear view mirror. Rear view mirror. Here's the rear view mirror. Ooh, that sun's bright. Let's pull down the visor. Visor. Even though the letter O is in the second syllable, don't try to make a vowel. Vise, er, er, er. Just the R sound. Visor, visor. Try that with me. Visor. Ooh, that sun's bright. Let's pull down the visor. I've been driving a long time. Time for a snooze. Good thing I have this headrest. Ah. Headrest. Compound words like this have stress on the first word. Head rest. Try that with me. Head rest. Head rest. Head rest. Good thing I have this head rest. Ah. This area is the console. Console. This word ends with a dark L. Soul. Ol. Ol. Tongue tip stays down and the back of the tongue pushes down and back a little bit. Ol, ol. Console. Try that with me. Console. Console. This area is the console. Always buckle up. This is the seat belt. Seat belt. Another compound word, stress on the first word. Seat belt. Notice I'm making both T's stop T's. Seat, belt. I'm not releasing them like T, a true T. Seat, belt, seat belt. Say that with me. Seat belt, seat belt. This is the seat belt. If you're having an emergency and need to pull over, turn on your hazards, also called four ways. Hazards. Even though you see the letter A in the second syllable, has erds. You can leave out the vowel, just R D S. Erds, erds, erds. Hazards. Try that with me. Hazards. Hazards. If you're having an emergency and need to pull over, turn on your hazards, also called four ways. We've got our driver's seat, passenger seat, and back seat. The driver's seat, the passenger seat, the back seat. Notice that we have the apostrophe S, but you can't really hear it because the next word begins with an S. The two S's blend together into one sound to link the words. Driver's seat, passenger seat. Try that with me. Driver's seat, passenger seat. We've got our driver's seat, passenger seat, and back seat. Back seat. 
we have a couple of interesting ways that we use this term in English. A backseat driver is one who gives too much input on driving when they're not driving. It can also mean of less importance, and we often use it in the negative. I won't take a back seat to him. That means I won't let him or his ideas be more important or prominent than mine. I won't take a back seat to him. And back seat. Now, if you're going to be riding in the car and you want to make sure you get this seat, you'll want to yell shotgun. Yelling shotgun. Yelling or calling shotgun. I don't know how this phrase got started but you say it when you want to sit in the front seat of the car. Shotgun. Stop T there. Shot. Gun. Say that with me. Shotgun. Shotgun. Now, if you're going to be riding in the car and you want to make sure you get this seat, you'll want to yell, shotgun. Here's the floor mat. Floor mat. Floor. Phonetically, this would be written with the all as in law vowel, but before R, this vowel is much more closed. The lips round more, and the back of the tongue pulls back more. Floor, 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 floor mat. Say that with me. Floor mat, floor mat. Here's the floor mat, and we have the gas pedal and the brake. Gas pedal, ga, a. We have the a vowel, gas. Gas pedal. Try that with me. Gas pedal. Gas pedal. And we have the gas pedal and the brake. Brake. This is a homophone and it's pronounced just like this other word, brake. Say that with me. Brake. Brake. And we have the gas pedal and the brake. Side mirror. Side mirror. Okay, we already went over the tricky word mirror. Here it is again. The word before it, side, ends in a D. Just make a little sound with the vocal cords, side, mm, 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 before the next word. You don't need to release the D, side, side, side mirror. Say that with me, side mirror, side mirror, side mirror. And here is the car seat. Car seat. Just like park. You need to drop your jaw to get a good ah vowel before the R. Car. Car. Car seat. Say that with me. Car seat. Car seat. And here is the car seat. Trunk. Trunk. Remember the TR cluster can be pronounced C-H-R. Trunk or Trunk. Try that with me. Trunk. Trunk. This is the same word that's used for the trunk of a tree. Trunk. License plate. License plate. Both the letter C and the letter S make the S sound here. License. License plate. Say that with me. License plate. License plate. License plate. And tires. Tires. Remember for the R, the tip of the tongue is pulled back and up. Tire. Tire. Tires. Try that with me. Tires. 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 Here's the antenna. Antenna. Stress on the middle syllable. Antenna. Try that with me. Antenna. Antenna. Here's the antenna. And this is where you can get to the gas tank. Gas tank. Both of these words are written phonetically with the a ah vowel. But this vowel is followed by the ng sound here, and it's not really an a ah vowel anymore. A. Ah. Gas. But tank. Ang. Hmm. It's more like the a diphthong. Gas. A. Ah. Tank. Ank. Try that with me. Gas tank. Gas tank. And this is where you can get to the gas tank. Windshield wiper. Windshield wiper. It's common to drop the D between two other consonants, and we definitely do that here. 
windshield, windshield, no D, windshield wiper, windshield wiper, windshield wiper. Try that with me. Windshield wiper, windshield wiper. Windshield wiper and the hood. I actually have no idea how to open this thing. Hood, double O making the O uh sound like in look, cook and foot. Hood, say that with me. Hood, hood. And the hood. I actually have no idea how to open this thing. Headlights. Headlights. Compound word, stress on the first word. Head lights. Say that with me. Headlights. 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 And in here, you would find the engine and all that other good stuff that I don't know anything about. Engine. Stress on the first syllable. The second syllable should be said very quickly. Gin, gin, gin. Engine. Say that with me. Engine. Engine. Headlights. And in here, you would find the engine and all that other good stuff that I don't know anything about. Had to come over to our trusty VW for this one, where we have a manual transmission. That's different from the automatic transmission in the other car. Manual versus automatic. Look, both of these words have the stressed a ah vowel in the stressed syllable. But the vowel isn't pure before a nasal consonant. Here it's before the N, so it relaxes into a. Uh. Man, manual, manual, manual. Try that with me. Manual, manual. Automatic has a pure a. Automatic. Notice both of those t's are flap t's. Ra, ra. Not true t's. Ra. Automatic. Automatic. Say that with me. Automatic. Automatic. Had to come over to our trusty VW for this one, where we have a manual transmission. That's different from the automatic transmission in the other car. Another common word for manual in the U.S. is stick shift. Try that with me. Stick shift. Stick shift. Now we have a third pedal, the clutch. Clutch. Try that with me. Clutch. Clutch. Now we have a third pedal. The clutch. Don't forget the horn. Horn. Just like floor in floor mat, we have the all vowel followed by R. The all vowel is a little bit more closed. Ho, o, horn. Horn. Try that with me. Horn. Horn. Don't forget the horn. <coughs> airbag. We have an airbag in the steering wheel here. Airbag. Another compound word, so stress is on the first word. Airbag. Airbag. Drop your jaw before that R. Air. Airbag. Try that with me. Airbag. 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 We have an airbag in the steering wheel here. On the manual, we have reverse, and then five different gears. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. First, second, third, fourth, fifth gears. These are all ordinal numbers, different from one, two, three, four. I know they can be tricky to pronounce. Practice them with me. First, second, third, fourth, fifth. On the manual, we have reverse, and then five different gears. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth. Here we have vents. Air vents. Compound word, even though there's a space, stress on the first word. Air vents. Try that with me. Air vents. Air vents. Here we have vents. Climate control. Climate control. Even though this second syllable looks like it might be what some people call a long A, mate, climate, it's not. It's really short, mit, mit, climate, climate control. Try that with me. 
Climate control. Climate control. Climate control. The radio. Radio. Three syllables stress on the first one. Radio. Radio. Try that with me. Radio. Radio. The radio. Odometer. Speedometer. Odometer. Speedometer. For both of these, the stress is on the syllable just before the suffix meter. Odometer. Speedometer. Notice the T's here are flaps. Try these words with me. Odometer. Speedometer. Odometer. Speedometer. This is called the grill of the car. Grill. Dark L. Grill. Keep the tongue tip down and pull the back part of the tongue back a little bit. Ol. Ol. Grill. Grill. I don't mention it, but the part under the grill is the bumper. My bumper really helps me when I'm parallel parking. Bumper. Say that with me. Bumper. Bumper. Gas gauge. Gas gauge. The word gauge is funny because the first G is pronounced G and the second G is pronounced J. Gas gauge. Try that with me. Gas gauge. Gas gauge. Gas gauge. Here we have the cruise control. Cruise control. You know, when we went over climate control, I didn't really talk about control, did I? Keep the first syllable really short. Don't even try to put a vowel in there. Con, con, con. Control. Control. Cruise control. Try that with me. Cruise control. Cruise control. Here we have the cruise control. Here we have the glove compartment. What kinds of interesting things do you have in yours? Glove compartment. Two stop T's in compartment. Glove compartment. Try that with me. Glove compartment. Glove compartment. Whew, that's a lot of terms. If some of these words are tricky for you, slow them down and practice them lots of times in a row they will get more comfortable. Let's go over some clothing vocabulary. Is there anything you need to buy for yourself or your family? First of all, I'm wearing a button down. This is what we call a shirt like this with buttons down the front and a collar. Sometimes it has a pocket. Wow, I chose a hard first word. Most Americans will pronounce button with a stop T. This is because of the pattern T schwa N. Most Americans make that a stop T, button, mm. but, mm. put your tongue up for the T, but stop the air and then make the N sound, button, button down. Try those with me, button, button down. First of all, I'm wearing a button down. This is what we call a shirt like this with buttons down the front and a collar. Sometimes it has a pocket. This can also be called a dress shirt. Dress shirt. Okay, what's interesting here is you can either say the S, dress shirt, or you can drop it, connect the two words, and just say the SH, dress shirt, dress shirt. You can definitely do that and it will still sound normal. Dress shirt. Try that with me. Dress shirt. This is also a little tricky because it has two R's and those can be a challenge. If they're hard for you, practice holding out the R. Dress shirt, shirt. Notice in the second word there is no vowel, it's the R vowel, shirt, shirt, shirt. Dress shirt, dress shirt. Say that with me now out loud. Dress shirt. This can also be called a dress shirt. First of all, let's start with the first layer. Now, I'm not gonna show you my underwear because that would just be weird, but we have underwear. Underwear, another tricky one with two R's in it. Again, hold out the R's to practice. Underwear. Make sure you have jaw drop for that E vowel before the second R consonant. Wear, wear, underwear, underwear. Say it with me. 
underwear. But we have underwear. Another term for it is panties. Some people hate that term. Panties. Oh boy, this word. I don't actually use it. I use underwear. Something to note about the pronunciation. It's not uncommon to drop the T after an N sound. So you can either pronounce this word with a true T, panties, or no T at all, panties. Try that with me. Panties. Panties. Another term for it is panties. Some people hate that term. Undergarments, that's not as common. Undergarments. You may see this word on a sign like keep your undergarments on while trying on swimwear, but we really don't say it. We don't use it very much. It's tough to pronounce, so let's just not worry about it. Undergarments, that's not as common. Women wear a bra. The full word is brassiere, but almost no one says that. Bra, brassiere. We usually use the word bra with the ah vowel, bra, but in the word brassiere, we don't have the ah vowel. It's the schwa in the first syllable, br, br, brassiere, bra. Say those with me, brazier, bra. Women wear a bra. The full word is brazier, but almost no one says that. And then men can wear boxers, boxers. Did you know there's no X sound in American English? The letter X is either the KS sounds together like an extra X, or the GZ sounds together like an exactly X. In boxers, it's the KS sounds. Boxers. Boxers. Say that with me. Boxers. And then men can wear boxers or briefs. Briefs. We have two vowel letters here, but they're just making one vowel sound, the E vowel. Briefs. If R gives you problems in a cluster, remember to hold it out. Briefs. Briefs. Try it with me. Briefs. Briefs. Socks. Socks. The letter O here makes the AH as in father vowel. Saw. Lots of jaw drop. Socks. Say it out loud. Socks. Socks. You can have just little athletic socks for running. You can have dress socks to wear with your suit or a more dressy outfit. You can have boot socks or knee-high socks that you would wear with a boot that came up your leg. Dress socks, boot socks, knee-high socks. Notice how the S at the end of dress leads you right into the S of socks with no break. Dress socks, dress socks. And no, you don't have to try to make it an extra long S, just one S sound. Try that with me. Dress socks, boot socks. The T here is a stop T because the next word begins with a consonant. Boot, stop the air, boot, socks, boot socks. Try that now. Boot socks, knee high socks. We have three words here, but they should all flow together. We don't want separation. Knee high socks. It's like one word with three syllables. Knee high socks. Notice the K is silent. Knee high socks. Try that with me. Knee high socks. You can have dress socks to wear with your suit or a more dressy outfit. You can have boot socks or knee high socks that you would wear with a boot that came up your leg. This is an undershirt and it's a common thing for men to wear under a dress shirt. Undershirt. It's the under part from underwear and the shirt part from dress shirt. Remember, the R is the vowel in shirt. Sh-er-t. Shirt. Undershirt. Say that with me. Undershirt. This is an undershirt, and it's a common thing for men to wear under a dress shirt. Your basic t-shirt. T-shirt. Once you've got shirt down, this one's pretty easy. T-shirt. Say it with me. T-shirt. Your basic t-shirt. Long sleeve t-shirt, of course, has long sleeves. Long sleeve t-shirt. You don't have to pronounce the D in long sleeved. It comes between two other consonants, and sometimes we drop T's and D's when that happens. Long sleeve t-shirt. 
long sleeve t-shirt. Say that with me. Long sleeve t-shirt. Long sleeve t-shirt, of course, has long sleeves. You know what I realized I forgot? The neckline with the t-shirt. When it's shaped like this, we call it a v-neck t-shirt. V-neck. Say that with me. V-neck. This is a tank top. Tank top. We don't fully pronounce the K here. K. We just do a quick stop of air like we do with the stop T. Tank top. Tank top. Tank top. And that vowel in tank. It's the A vowel followed by an NG sound. That NG sound really changes the vowel. It ends up sounding much more like the A diphthong, te, tank, tank top. Try that with me. Tank top. This is a tank top. Now you could also have a shirt that didn't have any straps. It was just tight here and then came down. That would be called a strapless shirt. Strapless. It has the word less in it, but we don't pronounce it like that. We pronounce it less. Quickly, it's unstressed. Strapless. Say it out loud with me. Strapless. If it's strapless and it's tight all the way down, then we call it a tube top. Tube top. Don't release the B, just close the lips. Tube top. Then open right into the T sound. Tube top. Try that with me. Tube top. This is a nice old comfy sweatshirt. So it's made out of this thick material, really cozy. This one has a hood, they don't have to. Sweatshirt. You don't need to fully pronounce either one of those T's. You can make them both stops. Sweatshirt. Sweatshirt. Abrupt stops give us the idea that it's a T. Sweatshirt. Say that with me. Sweatshirt. This is a nice old comfy sweatshirt. So it's made out of this thick material, really cozy. This one has a hood, they don't have to. And this is not quite the same thing as a hoodie. A hoodie has a hood and then it zips up the front. So this is David's big ol' hoodie. Hoodie. Careful, the double O here is not the OO vowel like in proof, OO. It's the O uh vowel like in book, O. Uh. O, uh, not OO. Huh. Huh. Hoodie. Hoodie. Say that with me. Hoodie. A hoodie has a hood and then it zips up the front. So this is David's big ol' hoodie. This would be a sleeveless shirt, so it's not a tank top, but it doesn't have sleeves. Sleeveless shirt, just like strapless. The second syllable is unstressed, less. It should be said quickly. Sleeveless. Say that with me. Sleeveless. This would be a sleeveless shirt, so it's not a tank top, but it doesn't have sleeves. Dress. Dress. The thing that's interesting about the DR cluster is that it can sound like JR, and that's right. So it can be D dress or J dress. If you're not sure about your R, hold it out. Dress, dress, dress. I'm making it with a J sound. I think that's more common. Dress, say it with me. Dress, dress. This is a jumper. I think there are a couple different terms for it, but basically it's one piece. It's not separate top and bottom, but it's also not a dress. It's like pants or shorts. Jumper or one piece. I've also seen this called a romper. The trick with the ER ending sounds is to make the R sound, but make it really quickly since it's in an unstressed syllable. Jumper, er, er, jumper, romper. Er, er, romper. Try those with me. Jumper, romper. This is a jumper. I think there are a couple different terms for it, but basically it's one piece. It's not separate top and bottom, but it's also not a dress. It's like pants or shorts. 
one piece. Right from the end into the P with no break. We don't want this to be choppy. One piece, one piece. Try that with me. One piece. But basically it's one piece. This is a sweater. Sweater. We have a flap T here because the T comes between two vowels. So it's not sweater with a true T, but sweater. Da -da -da. Flap with a flap T. Try that with me. Sweater. This is a sweater. And this is also a sweater, but you would probably call it a wrap. It's one of these things that you put on and it doesn't close up in the front, but you kind of wrap it like that. Wrap. The W in the WR cluster is silent. Just begin with the R sound. Wrap. Wrap. Say it out loud with me. Wrap. And this is also a sweater, but you would probably call it a wrap. It's one of these things that you put on and it doesn't close up in the front, but you kind of wrap it like that. Jeans. Jeans. Do you love jeans as much as I do? Jeans with the E vowel, G, jeans. Here the plural is a Z sound, but it's light, it's weak. Don't give it much energy. Jeans. Jeans. Now these jeans are a little different. They're maternity. So maternity refers to anything that's made especially for pregnant women. These are left over from my stony days. Maternity. First T is a true T. Second T is a flap T. Why? They both come between vowels. Yes, but a T is always a true T when it starts a stressed syllable. Maternity. Maternity. Say that with me. Maternity. Now these genes are a little different. They're maternity. So maternity refers to anything that's made especially for pregnant women. These are left over from my stony days. Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Just like sweatshirt, the T in sweat is a stop T because the next sound is a consonant. Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Say that with me. Sweatpants. Sweatpants. Shorts. So these could be called running shorts, athletic shorts, soccer shorts, whatever you use them for. Workout clothes. Shorts. All kinds of shorts. The vowel in shorts is the aw as in law vowel. But when this vowel is followed by r, it's pretty different. The lips round more and the tongue pulls back a little bit more. O, O, instead of A, A. O, O, shorts, shorts, shorts. Say it with me. Shorts. I also said workout clothes. The word clothes has the voiced TH, clothes. But you know what? Drop it. Americans almost always drop the TH in this word, close. So now it sounds just like this word, close. Yes, they will sound the same. That's okay. Say it with me. Close. So these could be called running shorts, athletic shorts, soccer shorts, whatever you use them for. Workout clothes, pants. You could also call them dress pants. Pants. Dress pants. We have the A vowel followed by the N consonant. All nasal consonants change the A vowel. Rather than A, it's A. A. The tongue relaxes in the back before the N. Pa. Pa. Pants. 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 Try that with me. Pants. Pants, you could also call them dress pants. These are khakis. Khakis, the H is silent. Khakis, say that with me. Khakis, these are khakis. These are swim trunks for men. You could also call it just a swimsuit. Swim trunks. The TR cluster can be pronounced C-H-R. That's common. So you can say T, trunks, or you can say Ch, trunks, swim trunks, swim. 
Note this is the I vowel, not the E vowel. Swim. I, I. More relaxed. Swim trunks. Say that with me. Swim trunks. Swimsuit. If an ending T like this is at the end of a thought group, it sounds nice to make it a stop T. Swimsuit. Swimsuit. Try that with me. Swimsuit. You could also say bathing suit. This word is tricky because it has a TH sound. This TH sound is voiced and just the very tip of your tongue comes through the teeth. Bathing suit. Bathing suit. Try that with me. Bathing suit. These are swim trunks for men. You could also call it just a swimsuit. For women, we have one piece. This is a one piece suit. It's strapless. One piece and strapless, we already went over these. One piece when we were talking about a jumper and strapless when we were talking about shirts. And then you can also have a bikini. That's two piece. You will never catch me in one of these in one of my videos. Bikini, two piece. In bikini, we have three letter I's, but the first one is the schwa, b. Bikini, say that with me. Bikini, two piece. Two with the T consonant and the U vowel. Let your lips be more relaxed and then round into the position. U, two. The movement of the rounding in is a very nice relaxed sound rather than tu, tu, where your lips are tight in the position the whole time. Relaxed, then round. Two. Two piece. And then you can also have a bikini. That's two piece. You will never catch me in one of these in one of my videos. When I'm at the beach, I also like to wear one of these. It's called a rash guard and it's a shirt made out of bathing suit material that can protect you from the sun. Rash guard. Remember to hold out your R's if they're tricky for you. R rash guard. Guard is like car or far. You need to drop the jaw for the vowel and leave the tongue tip forward, then pull it back and up for the R. Gar, guard. Say it out loud. Rash guard. When I'm at the beach, I also like to wear one of these. It's called a rash guard, and it's a shirt made out of bathing suit material that can protect you from the sun. This is a suit, so it's a jacket or suit coat and pants. Suit, pants, jacket, suit coat. Suit. If the next word begins with a constant, remember this ending T will be a stop T. Suit pants, suit jacket. Suit coat. Say those with me. Suit pants. Suit jacket. Suit coat. I forgot to show one of David's ties. This is a tie. True T I diphthong. Tie. Tie. Say that with me. Tie. This is a suit, so it's a jacket or suit coat and pants. Now there's also something called a blazer. And it's cut like a suit jacket, but it's a little bit more casual and it's not part of a set. Both men and women can wear suits or blazers and women's suits can come with pants or skirts. Blazer. The letter A makes the A diphthong. Diphthong means two positions, jaw drop, then tongue arching towards the roof of the mouth. A, A, bla, blazer. Say that out loud with me. Blazer. Now there's also something called a blazer and it's cut like a suit jacket, but it's a little bit more casual and it's not part of a set. And when women are getting more dressy, sometimes they wear hose or pantyhose. Hose or pantyhose. Panty, when said with hose, pretty much always has a dropped T. Pantyhose. Hose has the O diphthong. Two positions, jaw drop, then lip rounding. O, O, hose. Say that with me. Hose, pantyhose. And when women are getting more dressy, sometimes they wear hose or pantyhose. Now I'll use some of Stoney's clothes. These are overalls. 
Believe it or not, I don't own any overalls, so I had to use Stonies as an example of what are overalls. Overalls, two tricky sounds. The O diphthong. Make sure you have jaw drop and lip rounding. O, overalls. And the dark L at the end. Alls, not all, as, with the tongue tip moving up. Actually, the tongue tip should stay down the whole time. Over all, all, all. It's the back of the tongue that presses down and back a little bit to make that dark sound. Overalls, alls, alls. Say it with me. Overalls. These are overalls. Believe it or not, I don't own any overalls, so I had to use Stonies as an example of what are overalls. A onesie is a piece of baby's clothing where it snaps at the bottom. So you unsnap it to change the diaper quickly, but it's attached there to keep the shirt from rioting up. Because if you've ever spent any time with a baby, you know that if they're in just a shirt, it ends up around their neck or armpits. So this is a onesie. Onesie, spelled with an S, but pronounced with a Z sound. Onesie, say that with me. Onesie, so this is a onesie. Stoney has the cutest little pair of jean shorts. Jean shorts. So here, rather than saying jeans shorts, you drop the S in jeans. It's just jean shorts. Say that with me. Jean shorts. Stoney has the cutest little pair of jean shorts. Stoney has a pair of jeans that came with suspenders. So these things that you can put on pants to help them stay up are called suspenders. Suspenders. A three-syllable word with stress on the middle syllable. Make the first and third syllables as short as you can. Sus. Ders. Suspenders. Suspenders. Try that with me. Suspenders. Stoney has a pair of jeans that came with suspenders. So these things that you can put on pants to help them stay up are called suspenders. So Stoney has a vest. Vests can be two different things. First of all, they can be like this, something that's casual that's meant as another layer to add warmth. But you can also have a dressy one that would be part of a dress outfit for a man. And if it came with pants and a jacket as a set, then those three things would be called a three-piece suit. So a three-piece suit is a suit that includes a vest. Vest. Some language groups mix up V and W. This letter should definitely be pronounced with a V. Bottom lip to top teeth. V. No lip rounding. W. That's a W sound. V. Vest. Say that with me. Vest. That would be part of a dress outfit for a man. And if it came with pants and a jacket as a set, then those three things would be called a three-piece suit. So a three-piece suit is a suit that includes a vest. Three-piece suit. Three. Okay, this word is tricky. You have an unvoiced TH and the tongue tip must come through the teeth. Thur, er. Then the R, where your tip pulls back and up a little bit. Thur, er. Thur. Three, three-piece, three-piece suit. Try that with me, three-piece suit. So a three-piece suit is a suit that includes a vest. Let's talk outerwear. Outerwear, we have a flap T here because the T comes between two vowels. When I say vowels in these rules, I mean vowels or diphthongs because the beginning sound is the ow diphthong, ow outerwear. Wear. Tricky sound combination. Jaw drop for e eh before your r. Wear. 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 Outerwear. Outerwear. Say that with me. Outerwear. Let's talk outerwear. This is a down coat. It's a heavy, really warm winter coat. Down coat. I've noticed something that several different language groups do to this combination ow plus n. They drop the n and make the ow diphthong sound nasally. It sort of sounds like this, down, 
There's no nasal quality to this diphthong. Let's break it up. Dow, mm. Dow, mm. Dow, mm. Down, down, down. Try that with me. Down. Coat with the O diphthong, jaw drop, then lip rounding. Down coat. Down coat. Try that with me. Down coat. This is a down coat. It's a heavy, really warm winter coat. This jacket is a little more lightweight, so you would probably wear it in the fall or spring, but you could still just call it a jacket. Lightweight jacket. Notice all three of these T's can be stop T's. They're either followed by a consonant or at the end of a thought group. Light, weight, jacket. Lightweight jacket. Try that with me. Lightweight jacket. This jacket is a little more lightweight, so you would probably wear it in the fall or spring, but you could still just call it a jacket. This is something a little bit different, a little strange, a little old fashioned. I got this from my sister-in-law. So this doesn't really have arms, it's just a poncho. Poncho. We have two different pronunciations for the letter O here. The first one is the ah as in father vowel, pa, pon. The second is the O diphthong, O, cho, poncho. Try that with me, poncho. I got this from my sister-in-law. So this doesn't really have arms, it's just a poncho. Fur coat, fur coat. Fur can be tricky because it has the R vowel in it. Don't drop your jaw or try to make some sort of vowel sound before the R. It's just two sounds, f and er. Fur, fur, fur coat. Try that with me, fur coat. And we'll go back to food with fruits. We're heading into the grocery store to go shopping for some fruits. Delicious looking watermelon. There's a good one. Okay, so I didn't get too much footage in the store, but did you hear what that melon was called? It's called watermelon, probably my favorite melon. Watermelon is a compound word, and with compound words, we put stress on the first word. In this case, it's the word water. We have a flap T in water, then the word melon. There's secondary stress on mel. So the main stress is on wa, water, melon. Don't let that O-N ending fool you. It's a schwa, mm, mm, mm. said very quickly. Watermelon, watermelon. Try that with me, watermelon. Delicious looking watermelon. There's a good one. We actually bought a bunch of fruits and took them home. So let's go back to my kitchen. But first, let's take a look at the word fruit. It has the FR constant cluster, fur, fur, then the U vowel, fru, and the T. The ending T will be a stop T if it's at the end of a thought group or followed by a consonant, fruit. Fruit. It will be a flap T if it links into a vowel or a diphthong. Fruitin. Fruitin. Da da da. Fruitin. Fruit in the salad. Apple. 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 We have two letter P's in this word, but together they make just one P sound. The second syllable is unstressed and it's just the dark L. Ul. Ul. Apple. Apple. For the stressed vowel, a. Ah, you may find you pronounce it better if you lift your upper lip just a little bit. Ah, back of the tongue should be lifted. Apple, say it with me. Apple, apple, apple. David ate our last banana, so here's a photo of a banana. Banana, this word is spelled with three A's, but we don't pronounce them all the same way because of syllable stress. The stressed syllable in this word is the second one, na, which has the a as in bat vowel sound, banana. Because the a vowel comes before the nasal consonant n, it's not a pure a vowel. We'll relax it into the a uh vowel before n, banana, 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 banana. 
The other two syllables are unstressed and use the schwa, b, n, b, nan, n, banana. Say that with me, banana. David ate our last banana, so here's a photo of a banana. Blackberry, strawberry, blueberry. Not pictured, raspberry. So here we have three berries. Berry is a two-syllable word with stress on the first syllable. It has the e vowel followed by r. This sound combination is tricky because the r changes e a little bit. We don't have as much jaw drop as we would for a pure e vowel. E, air, bear, be, e. You can see I'm dropping my jaw more for the pure vowel. Berry. Berry. I mentioned four kinds of berries. Blackberry, strawberry, blueberry. Not pictured, raspberry. Blackberry, strawberry, blueberry, and raspberry. These are all four compound words. With compound words, stress is always on the first word. Black, blue, straw, ras, blackberry, blueberry. In all four of these three syllable words, the first syllable is stressed. Blackberry, strawberry, blueberry, raspberry. Notice the P in raspberry is silent. We don't say it at all. Say these with me. Blackberry, strawberry, blueberry, raspberry. Blackberry, strawberry, blueberry, not pictured, Raspberry. A similar word to berry is pear. Bear. Pear. I didn't get a video clip of a pear, but this is a picture of a pear. Sometimes we use the term pear shaped to describe a body, bigger through the thighs and hips and more tapered up top. Pear. Pear is just like bear, except the first sound is unvoiced instead of voiced. B -b. Pear, pear, less jaw drop than we would have for a pure e. Eh. Pear. Cantaloupe, we took video of in the right. store, pictures of. I couldn't find that video of the cantaloupe, so here's an image. It has that rough skin and that sweet, soft orange meat inside. Cantaloupe. This is a word that will teach you not to trust English spelling. The first syllable is stressed. It uses the a ah as in bat vowel. Just like with banana, it's not a pure a ah because it's followed by n. Ka uh, uh. Relax the back of the tongue. We get that uh sound. Can. Can. Cantaloupe. You probably notice that I'm not pronouncing the t. Like in the words interview and intermission, the t is often dropped after n. You just pronounce the N. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. You can make the true T. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. But listen to how I said it in the kitchen when I wasn't thinking about pronunciation. Cantaloupe. We took video of in the store. Pictures of. Cantaloupe. I dropped the T. The spelling of the last syllable can also cause confusion. This is the O as in no diphthong and the final E is silent. Lope, lope, cantaloupe. Try that with me. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. We took video of in the store, pictures of. Cherries, not to be confused with a cherry tomato. Cherries. Cherry. This is just like berry, except it starts with the CH consonant, ch. Cherry. Two syllables with stress on the first syllable. Chair. The first syllable sounds just like a chair you sit in. Chair. Chair. Cherry. Say that with me. Cherry. Cherries. Not to be confused with a cherry tomato. Cherries. You know, I didn't get a good video of grapes. We have green grapes and red grapes and also conquered grapes. Grapes can have seeds or not. Grapes has the GR cluster. Lip position doesn't matter for the G, so your lips will already be rounding for the R. Gr, gr, gray. A diphthong, P 
PS cluster. Grapes, grapes. Red, green. Both of these begin with the R or an R cluster. So again, lip rounding, red, green, grapes, red grapes, green grapes. Concord grapes make great juice, great jams, and I even have a great pie recipe for Concord grapes. Stresses on the first syllable, K consonant, ah, vowel, then the NG sound, Concord. The letter N is usually pronounced as NG when it's followed by G or K. So the back of the tongue lifts to touch the soft palate to make the NG sound, Concord. Then a quick unstressed syllable, K sound, schwa R, curd, 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 concord, concord grape. Red grapes, green grapes, concord grapes. Say these with me. Red grapes, green grapes, concord grapes. I have an orange and a grapefruit. Let's slice them open. Not pictured tangerine, there are actually lots of different citrus fruits, aren't there? Too, oops, too many to put in one video about fruits. Okay, so here you can really see the difference. First of all size, but the grapefruit is that beautiful pink color inside, and then orange is more orange. Orange, grapefruit, tangerine, citrus. Orange, this word is known for having nothing that rhymes with it. It's pronounced with the aw as in law vowel. And when that's followed by r, it's not pure. We round the lips more, we pull the tongue back more. Or. Or. The second syllable is unstressed and said quickly. Or. Nj. 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 Super fast, i vowel, n, and then a j sound. Or. Nj. Orange. Say that with me, orange. I have an orange and a grapefruit. Grapefruit, a compound word of two words we've already studied, grape and fruit. Do you remember what we said about stress in compound words? It's the first word that's stressed. So grape, grapefruit. P is a stop consonant, and we usually don't release stop consonants when followed by another consonant. Grape, fruit. Notice my lips came together for the P, but I didn't p release the air before going to the F. Grape, fruit. Grapefruit. Say that with me. Grapefruit. I have an orange and a grapefruit. Let's slice them open. Not pictured tangerine. Tangerine a three-syllable word with stress on the last syllable, tangerine. So the first two syllables are said a little more simply, tanger, 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 tangerine, tanger. When the a vowel is followed by n, like in this first syllable, remember it's not pure, ta, ta, tan, tanger, 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 tangerine, tangerine, tanger, Een. Tangerine. Say that with me. Tangerine. Tangerine. Let's slice them open. Not pictured tangerine. There are actually lots of different citrus fruits. Citrus. The S sound is in there twice, at the beginning and the end. Once it's made with the letter C and once with the letter S. In the middle we have the TR cluster. It's pretty common to turn the T into a CH in the TR cluster. Do you hear a CH? Citrus. Ch, sitch, sitch, citrus. Citrus, first syllable stress. Say that with me. Citrus. I have an orange and a grapefruit. Let's slice them open. Not pictured tangerine. There are actually lots of different citrus fruits, aren't there? Too, oops, too many to put in one video about fruits. Another word that I didn't get video for is kiwi. Unlike many words in English, this word is pronounced just like it looks like it should be pronounced. 
E vowel in both syllables. First syllable is stressed. Kiwi. Kiwi. Say that with me. Kiwi. Lemon. We also have limes. Lemon and lime. Lemon. A two-syllable word with stress on the first syllable. The L is a light L because it begins the word. Then we have the E eh as in bed vowel. Le. Lemon. The last syllable uses the schwa, though you don't really need to think about it. You can just move from N into N. Men. 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 The schwa will happen automatically. Lemon. Lemon. Say that with me. Lemon. Lemon. We also have limes. Lemon and lime. Lime. One syllable using the I as in by diphthong. This is another light L because L is at the beginning of the word lie. Lie. Then the M consonant. Lime. Lips come together. Lime. Try that with me. Lime. Lemon. We also have limes. Lemon and lime. Mango. Let's cut this one open. Mangoes are really hard to cut because they have that huge pit in the middle. They're really sweet. This one's organic. Mango, pit, organic. When we learned the word banana, I said how the a vowel is not pure before an N sound. Nan. The a vowel is also not pure before an NG consonant. A pure vowel would sound like this. A. Ma. Mango. Mango. But we say mango. Mango. So before NG, the a vowel changes to a sound that's more like the A diphthong. Mango. Mang, may, a, mango. So we have the ng sound, then a hard g. Mang, go, mango. Stress is on the first syllable. Mango. Try that with me. Mango. Mango. Let's cut this one open. Mangoes are really hard to cut because they have that huge pit in the middle. I said pit here. And earlier I said seed when I was talking about grapes. Pit and seed. With pit, we have the P consonant, I as in sit vowel, and the T. Ending Ts are stop Ts if they're at the end of a thought group or followed by a consonant. Pit. Seed. S consonant, E vowel, and the D consonant. Seed sounds longer than pit, doesn't it? That's because of the voiced ending versus unvoiced ending. The unvoiced sound, t, makes the word a little shorter, pit. The voiced ending, d, makes the vowel a little longer, seed. Pit, seed. Say those with me. Pit, seed. Mangoes are really hard to cut because they have that huge pit in the middle. They're really sweet. This one's organic. Organic not using artificial chemicals when growing the fruit. A three-syllable word with middle syllable stress. Just like with orange, the first syllable has a modified aw vowel where the lips round more than normal, or, or, organic. The stressed syllable is just like banana, nan, where the a vowel is more like a, a, organic because it's followed by an N. Organic. Try that with me. Organic. They're really sweet. This one's organic. Peach. It's like a nectarine, but it's fuzzy. Peach. Peach and nectarine. Peach is one syllable with the E as in she vowel. P. Peach. The final consonant is the CH sound. Peach. Say that with me. Peach. Nectarine, just like tangerine. It's a three-syllable word with stress on the last syllable. Nectarine. Notice the middle syllable is really short. There's really no vowel sound there. Nectar, er, 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 er. The schwa gets absorbed by the R. Nectar, er. Nectarine. Say that with me. Nectarine. Peach. It's like a nectarine, but it's fuzzy. 
peach. I didn't get a video clip of a pineapple, but that's another compound word. We're getting lots of compound words with the fruits. Stress on the first word here, pine, pineapple. Pine using the I as in by diphthong. Some students have trouble pronouncing this diphthong before the end consonant. Make sure you finish the movement of the diphthong before lifting the front of the tongue for the end. Pi, mm, pine, pine. Then the word apple, unstressed. Pineapple, pineapple. Say that with me, pineapple. Plum, here I have four plums. Plum, plum. One syllable word with the uh as in butter vowel. PL cluster, plum, plum. A light escape of air with the lips while the tongue tip is at the roof of the mouth for the L. Pull, pull, plum. This word is a homophone with a different word, plum, spelled with a B, but pronounced exactly the same way. The B is silent. Plum. Say that with me. Plum. Plum. Here I have four plums. Plum. Did I miss your favorite fruit? That was a lot, but I know I certainly couldn't do all fruits. There are just so many of them. Laundry is probably my favorite household chore. Let's go over laundry vocabulary. My laundry room is in my basement, so we're gonna head down there. It would be awesome to have a laundry room where you didn't have to go down into the dark, scary part of your house, but I don't. So laundry room. Laundry room. The word laundry is interesting because it has a DR cluster. And often Americans pronounce the DR cluster so it sounds like JR, J, laundry, J, dre. You can make a DR cluster, D, dre, but you don't have to. You may find it easier to make a JR cluster, that's fine. That's what most Americans do. Laundry, laundry. Try that with me. Laundry, laundry room. And my laundry room is in my basement. All right, let's go to the basement. All right, we made it to the basement. So first of all, this is a laundry basket. I have two different laundry baskets. Now this should probably be in here. Laundry basket. Basket with the a ah as in bat vowel. The unstressed syllable has a very quick i vowel. It. Basket. Basket. Say that with me. Basket. Laundry basket. All right, we made it to the basement. So first of all, this is a laundry basket. I have two different laundry baskets. Now this should probably be in here. Hard to tell. Okay, so we have lights or whites and darks. And that's sort of funny because light, dark, white, those are adjectives. But we put an S at the end of them, turning them into a noun. So if this was all white, I could call it whites. But since I also have other stuff in here, like Stoney's cute little gray jeans, I'm gonna call these my lights. It's not all white. And these are darks, you could also call them colors. Usually we just split our laundry into lights and darks. Lights, darks, whites, colors. We have four plurals here. The rule for plurals is the S is pronounced as an S when the sound before was unvoiced. So that's an S sound for lights, darks, and whites. If the sound before was voiced, then it's a Z sound. That's for colors. Ending Z sounds are weak and they usually sound like a really weak S. Colors. Instead of S, like in darks. TS cluster can confuse people. The tongue tip can actually stay down. Lift a part of the tongue further back to the roof of the mouth and stop the sound. Tss, tss. When you lower that part of the tongue, the tongue is in position to make the S. Whites, lights, whites, lights. Try all four of those with me. Lights, darks, whites, colors. Hard to tell. Okay, so we have lights or whites and darks. Washing machine. Washing machine. Look, we have the SH sound twice. Once it's spelled with an SH, 
and in machine with a ch. Same sound spelled differently. Washing machine. Washing machine. Try that with me. Washing machine. Washing machine and dryer. Dryer. Another dr cluster, so you can either make it a d, d, dryer, or a j sound, j, dryer. The i diphthong, lots of jaw drop for that, dryer. Then a quick er at the end, no break, dryer, dryer, smooth connection, dryer. Say that with me, dryer. Washing machine and dryer. And for clothes that you're not going to put in the dryer, we have a drying rack. Very useful. Drying rack. Now instead of ER, we have an ING ending. Drying. Drying. A smooth transition between syllables, no break. Drying. Rack. Tight circle for the beginning R. Ra, ah, then lots of jaw drop. Rack. Drying rack. Try that with me. Drying rack. And for clothes that you're not going to put in the dryer, we have a drying rack. Very useful. We also have a utility sink where we can hand wash clothes. Utility sink. The T here comes between two vowels. That's a flap T unless it begins a stressed syllable, which is what happens here. So it's a true T. Util. Utility. The second T is between two vowels and doesn't start a stressed syllable, so it's a flap. Utility. Try that with me. Utility. Sink. The I vowel here is followed by the NG consonant. The letter N always makes an NG sound when it's followed by a K, so it's made with the back of the tongue, sing, instead of the front, mm. When I is followed by NG, which happens all the time with ING words, the I vowel is a little tighter. It's closer to E, so it's not I, S, SINK, but E, C, SINK, SINK. Say that with me. Utility sink. We also have a utility sink where we can hand wash clothes. So sometimes you don't put it in the washer, you hand wash it. Hand wash. This is a case where you can drop the D. It's not uncommon to drop the D between two other consonants. And I think it sounds just fine to say hand wash. Hand wash. The requirement for dropping the D is you have to link the two words together, no separation. Hand wash. Hand wash. Say that with me. Hand wash. So sometimes you don't put it in the washer, you hand wash it. Iron, that's a pretty tough word. Iron. And then we also have an ironing board. Iron and ironing board. Okay, tough words here. It looks like it should be iron, but it's not. Actually, the R comes after the vowel in the second syllable. Since the vowel there is the schwa, you don't even need to try to make a vowel sound there. When R comes after schwa, it absorbs it. Err, just one sound. Ern. I earn. I earn. It might help you connect these two syllables if you think of a Y sound being in between them. I earn. Iron. Iron. So separate what the word looks like based on the letters from the pronunciation. If you focus on how the word looks, it will probably mess up how you say it. Iron. Iron. Say that with me. Iron. Try it now with the ing ending. Ironing. Ironing. Ironing board. Again, don't focus too much on the letters. That might mess you up. Just imitate what you're hearing me say. Ironing, ironing, ironing board. Try that with me. Ironing board. Iron. And then we also have an ironing board. So you can see we have the load size and the temperature. Load size. We have two diphthongs here. 
First an O diphthong, jaw drop, then lip rounding, load, load. Then the I diphthong, jaw drop, then the tongue arching towards the roof of the mouth. I, sigh, sighs, load sighs. Notice what's happening with the D. I don't release it, but I don't drop it. I make a really quick D sound in my vocal cords before the S. Load size, load size. Connect the two words. Try that with me. Load size, load size. So you can see we have the load size and the temperature. Temperature. This is a tricky word. It looks like it should be four syllables. Temp, er, a, uh, chur. But many Americans will make this just three. It's a simpler pronunciation. Tem, pr, chur. Try it. Tem, pr, chur. Notice the second T here is a CH sound. Temperature. Temperature. Try that with me. Temperature. So you can see we have the load size and the temperature. Temperature. So load size anywhere from small to super, which means really big. Precise fill just means the machine will figure out how much you have in there. For temperature, we have anywhere from cold to hot, passing through warm and colors. Tap cold, what does that mean? That just means that the machine doesn't try to make it cold. It just uses whatever the temperature is as the cold comes out of the tap. Then we have several different options here. So these are all dials. And these, of course, are buttons. Dials and buttons. Let's start with dials. We have the I diphthong and then a dark L. Dial. Tongue tip stays down. It does not lift before the S. Dials. The back of the tongue does the work here for the dark L. Pulls back, presses down a little bit. Ol, ol, dial, dials. Try that with me. Dials. Is your tongue tip lifting? Don't let it. Try again. Dials, dials. Buttons. The double T here is a stop T because it comes before schwa N. So put your tongue into position for the T, stop the air, but ns. Then make an N sound. Button. Buttons. Say that with me. Buttons. So these are all dials. And these, of course, are buttons. This is where you choose your wash cycle. I don't usually get too crazy here, but we have a wash cycle. You can also choose an extra rinse for a rinse or an extra spin for the spin cycle. So cycle is another word that we use with laundry. Wash, rinse, spin cycle. Careful with the P not to put too much air in it. Some people want to p put a lot of air in, making almost an extra H sound. Spin, spin, p. It's just spin. P, p, p. A very light separation of the lips. Not a B, spin, but a very light P. P, spin. Wash, rinse, spin cycle. Say those with me. Wash, rinse, spin cycle. So cycle is another word that we use with laundry. So that's it for the washer. We have a top loader. More fancy ones are front loaders. Top loader and front loader. Both P and T are stop consonants. That means there's a stop of air and a release. When stop consonants at the end of a word, are followed by another consonant, we usually don't release them. P, t. We just move on to the next sound. So top loader looks like this. Top loader. My lips come together for the P that stops the sound. Top loader. But then I just go into the L sound. Top loader. Top loader. Front loader. Front loader. Stop the air in between. This is not the same as front loader, front loader, where there's no T at all. I am making a T by making the stop of air. The stop is needed. Front loader, 
front loader. Say these two with me, top loader, front loader. So that's it for the washer. We have a top loader. More fancy ones are front loaders. And ours has, if you can bring the camera over here, ours has this thing in the middle, which is called an agitator. Some washers don't have an agitator. Agitator. We have two T's between vowels. The first is a true T and the second is a flap. Why? Because the first one begins a stressed syllable. You might say, wait a second, Rachel, agitator stresses on the first syllable. Okay, you're right, but there's secondary stress on the third syllable, agitator. Secondary stress generally doesn't mean much. It's really just like an unstressed syllable. But when it comes to this true T rule, it does matter. A T is always a true T if it starts a stressed syllable, and that includes secondary stress. The second T between two vowels starts an unstressed syllable, so it's a flap, R. Agitator, agitator. Say that with me, agitator. Ours has this thing in the middle, which is called an agitator. Some washers don't have an agitator. We have laundry detergent. Laundry detergent. Detergent. First T, a true T, because it begins a stressed syllable. Detergent. Say that with me. Detergent. This can also be called laundry soap. Soap. A light release of the P. Soap. Or not. Soap. Say that with me. Soap. We have laundry detergent. And we have, oh, this is heavy. Bleach. Bleach. BL consonant cluster. As soon as the lips part, the tip of the tongue is right at the roof of the mouth. Bull. Bleach. Say that with me. Bleach. Oh, this is heavy. Bleach. We don't have fabric softener, but that's another thing you can put in your washing machine. Fabric softener. Softener. This word is interesting because in the word soft, we pronounce the T. Soft. But in the word soften or softener, the T is silent. Softener. Say that with me. Softener. Fabric softener. We don't have fabric softener, but that's another thing you can put in your washing machine. We also have stain remover. Of course, with a kid, we need to use it all the time. Stain remover, so important to have. I like the word remover because it's a stressed syllable, move, with a really quick R sound before and after. The quickest R sound you can make, er. Remover, remover. Most non-native speakers make their unstressed syllables too long. How short can you make these unstressed syllables? Er. Move. Er. Remover. Stain remover. Try that with me. Stain remover. We also have stain remover. Of course, with a kid, we need to use it all the time. I think usually when I refer to this, I just refer to the brand. Like, David, I think we need more Zout. Is this Zout or Z-out? I don't know. Spray and wash, stain stick, OxyClean, Max Force. You gotta have a variety. So for the dryer, you have a couple different options. Automatic dry, that's what I always use. Automatic dry, both T's are flap T's. Automatic, I'll do it with two true T's. Automatic, wow, automatic. Flap T's really help to smooth out and make an American sound. Automatic, we love that smooth flow of sound in American English. Automatic. Try it with me. Automatic. So for the dryer, you have a couple different options. Automatic dry, that's what I always use. And of course, these are dials, just like on the washing machine. And don't forget to empty the lint screen. Lint screen. Lint screen. What am I doing with that T? Lint screen. I'm making it a stop. Lint screen. It's different from lin screen, where there's no break. We need that little break, lint screen, that little stop to know a T was there. Lint screen, lint screen. Say that with me, lint screen. 
And don't forget to empty the lint screen. We don't have any, but you might put dryer sheets in. Dryer sheets. Remember, you can make this word with a D sound, dryer, or a J sound, dryer. Dryer sheets. Say that with me now. Dryer sheets. We don't have any, but you might put dryer sheets in to keep your clothes from getting staticky. Static. Staticky. T's in beginning clusters are usually true T's. St. St. The second T is a flap. Static. Staticky. Try that with me. Static. Staticky. We don't have any, but you might put dryer sheets in to keep your clothes from getting staticky. All right, I have a load to do. Let's do it. This is a big one. This is gonna be a super. I'm not sure if that sweater should go in. I think it's okay. Some stuff is dry clean only. Do you ever put dry clean only stuff in your washing machine? I know I do. I'm guilty of that. Dry clean. It's a compound word written with a space, and a compound word has stress on the first word, like eyeball or bedroom. Dry clean. So rather than clean, it's clean. Unstressed. Dry clean. Try that with me. Dry clean. Some stuff is dry clean only. Do you ever put dry clean only stuff in your washing machine? I know I do. I'm guilty of that. Stuff it down around the agitator. Wow, that's really full. Okay, I'm pretty sure you're supposed to put this in first, but I have never ever done that in my entire life of doing laundry. And I did have to start doing my own laundry when I was in the fourth grade, about nine years old. That's when my mom was like, I'm not doing your laundry anymore. Okay, normal, super, tap, cold. There we go. That was a lot of vocabulary. What words were new for you? Put them in the comments below. Please subscribe with notifications on so you never miss a video and keep your learning going right now with this video. I love being your English teacher. That's it and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.